Okay, let's see the characteristics of stars in the four corners of the HR diagram. Okay, so if we go back to the HR diagram, just I'll put any one of these versions up. If I were to ask you, what would we expect the characteristics of the lower right corner star? Would they be hot? Or would they be cold? Okay, the answer is they're cold, right? See, they're cold, so they're not hot. So in the lower right corner, what are the characteristics of the stars? Cold, okay? Are they bright or dim? Okay? You can either look at the right side on the Hipparchus scale, or you can look at the left side in comparison to the sun, their luminosity, okay? So if you go to the lower right corner, you see Hipparchus scale 15, they're dim, means they're dim. See, one ten thousandth, one hundredth the brightness of the sun. So they're dim, okay? So they're cold. They are small, but they're not the smallest. Remember, the sizes went like this. So they're not the smallest. The smallest ones would be these guys. So we would expect these guys to be small, but they're not the smallest stars, okay? So they're called small, very dim, and very light stars. That means they don't weigh a lot, not a lot of mass. So in terms of mass or weight, they're very light. Okay, what are these stars called? Red dwarfs. See, red dwarfs. And then we saw that they are the most abundant, right, on the histogram. Okay, example of that, Proxima Centauri, the closest star to us. It's a red dwarf star. That's our closest star, Proxima Centauri, four light years away from the sun. In the upper right corner, these guys here, okay, super giants, you see. What do we expect of them? Well, examples of those will be Betelgeuse, uh, which is a 1A and B, and Tar is 1B. Less luminous supergiant, and this one is a supergiant, bright supergiant. What do we expect them to be? Well, we still expect them to be cold. You see, on this side is cold. That's something that often students get wrong when I've asked them, because they think that these guys are bright, so they should be hot, okay? And uh, it's kind of counterintuitive at first, but actually they're cold, okay? But if they're cold, how can they be so bright? What's the second property? Their size. They're cold, but they're huge, thousand times bigger than the sun, even bigger than that maybe. So they are very, very large, you see? This picture doesn't even do justice. If we really truly wrote their size, it would be out, you know, you couldn't even fit it on the slide. They're very big. They are very bright, and they're very massive. Okay, in the upper left corner, these guys, how are they different than these guys? Yeah, they're hot now, okay? These are still living stars. They're hot, super hot. So what are they? They are bright mean sequence stars. That means they're not dead yet. They are examples of those will be Spica, which is a Roman numeral five, Adara, Roman numeral five. That means they're both mean sequence stars, okay? So um, they are hot stars, blue slash white appearance, okay? Just like this one, you see? This one is starting to die already. They are large stars, but not very large. Okay, maybe they're 100 times bigger than the sun. Maybe 10 times bigger than the sun. But as they go this way, they're gonna get even larger. Even larger, 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 and they're gonna cool down. You see? So um, they're not the very, very large, but they are larger than the sun. And they are very bright. Probably just about as bright as these guys, 
but they're not as large, okay? So one is larger, these ones are larger, they're colder, these ones are hotter, and they are uh, hotter, but they're not as large, you see? Very massive. In the lower left corner, or the center, that means lower left anywhere here, anywhere here, or anywhere the center, you see these guys here. And then these are the white dwarfs, okay? Neutron stars, black holes, okay? If we were to, these are gonna be three kinds of stars that we're gonna learn about in the next lecture. When a star is dead, it can either end up as a white dwarf star, it can end up as a neutron star, or it can end up as a black hole, okay? So that's where you would plot them. Sirius B, Prokeon B are examples of them. When they saw B, remember we saw that before, they're in our neighborhood. They are both white dwarf stars. They would go uh, over there, okay? So what do we expect of them? We expect them to be hotter than the sun. You see, this is the sun somewhere here. So we expect them to be hotter. On, they're on the left side. They're very small maybe one hundredth the size of the sun, one thousandth the size of the sun. They're very dim. The reason that they're dim is because they're so small, you see? Even though they're hot, but the fact that they're small makes them very dim. So you can't really see them at night. You can't go out and say, oh, there's a white dwarf there. They're so small, okay? You're going to barely be able to see it. And they're very light in terms of mass or weight, very, very light not a lot of mass, 